Hello everyone, I'm Sam Clift and in this colour pencil tip video I'm going to be showing you how I drew this Satsuma and I'm just going to be concentrating on this segment here just showing you how I rendered the colours to make it look juicy and realistic. I hope you enjoy the video. Here are all my pencils laid out and my collection of sharpenings. So I'm using a mixture of Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and Faber-Castell Polychromos for this Satsuma study. And I'm starting off by taking up the graphite with a kneadable eraser. So I'm lightening that so it doesn't show through when I add especially the lighter layers. So I'm just going in with a, actually this is a Pablo pencil from the Caran d'Ache range and it's a cream and just going in with the lightest colour that I see in the whole of this segment of the Satsuma and then going in with a very very light orange I will list the colours in the description box below but this is the luminance so it's wax based and I'm just going in with a very very light hand to begin with building up the colours gradually and as it's the beginning of the drawing sometimes it takes a little while to get into it I'm going in with a very very light orange now and orangey yellow in the polychromos and then back into the apricot of the luminance pencils and what I'm doing is I'm just mapping out the different segments of the Satsuma starting off very very lightly using a very very light hand and using kind of feathery circular motions just to make sure that I'm not adding too much pigment too soon just while I get to grips with this drawing and just start to make sense of it really. This is a cadmium orange in the polychromos and I'm starting to add a little bit of depth now into the darkest parts of the orange of the Satsuma and just going in with the darkest parts the shadows so that there's a big contrast between the lightest parts so there's some kind of pith areas that are very very light and in between each orange section there is a, a kind of a whitey yellow section as well that I need to make sure that I leave uh, free of most of the pigment of the orange. I'm going in with the warm greys as well just to create a little bit of uh, pigment down a little bit of shadow in the white area the pigment area so you generally find when it's a white area it's not generally white it's generally lots of different tones of grey so going in with the warm grey 2 and the warm grey 3 just to add a little bit of shadow within those darkest parts of the pith. Now I'm just adding that kind of or using that same technique for the rest of the bigger sections of the orange going in with those circular motions that you can see very very light hand and then using that technique through the whole of this segment just darkening up those parts that or just kind of mapping out where I need to go so that I can see where I can add the shadows then. What I'm also doing is adding some extra layers with the same pencil in certain areas so that I create this texture. It's not just one block colour. I'm darkening up a little bit and then lightening up with the pencil with the next part. And then I'm just blending with the lighter colours, the yellow that you can see there. And as I've mapped in those darker parts, some shadows within the orange, I know then that I can go in with a darker cadmium orange to just darken up those shadows a little bit more all those kind of different tones within the orange and you can see here I've gone to the different sections of the uh, Satsuma and use that same technique going from light to dark adding those different colours and then building up the shadows as I go blending in between with some lighter colours some yellows and the creams and just making sure that I build it up gradually and don't go in too dark too soon. The cadmium orange again, darkening up some of those shadows. And then I'm just going into the pith area with a cream colour or a very, very light ochre and adding a little bit of apricot from the luminance range just to make sure that, as you can see, it's quite a contrast now between the, the white and the orange and it's very very difficult to judge the tone until you've got other sections in because it's relative to the colours that it has around it so just not able to add certain parts until you've got other bits in so it's kind of working methodically and working um, to some kind of method just to make sure that you 
you have less chance of going wrong. And if you do go wrong, which we all make mistakes, then you can put it up quite easily. Now you can see that I've added a little bit of the skin that was underneath this Satsuma segment. And as I've got those really dark tones in now of the orange, I know that I can go a little bit darker. I need to create some depth and some contrast between the lightest parts of the segment and the parts that are slightly in shadow from the skin and from the other segment that I'm going to add later. So I know that I can darken up those sections now and they need it to give that kind of 3D look. Just making sure that I'm looking at my reference photo and just really looking at where the darkest parts are sometimes squinting your eyes really helps and you can really see where the highlights are where the shadows are now I've added the rest of the satsuma you can really see that I need to darken up those shadows some more so I'm going in with the caput mortem in the polychromos which is a really really great color to use for shadows because it's a purpley color which is opposite to orange on the color wheel it's a complementary color so it adds a subtle and realistic looking shadow just blending with the cadmium orange to make sure that those dark purples aren't too dark and too much of a contrast and then going in with the lighter oranges just to blend in between darkening up some of those mid-tones now just to finish everything off and that's the satsuma complete